Hey everyone, the state of Minnesota is currently working on some laws that would actually effectively put us out of business. This has been our whole life, me and my brothers, we've been raising whitetails since, well, before we were born. And uh, with us here we have year and a half old Typhoon. This is his first set of antlers. He's a tame bottle fed pet. He's been traveling around the country with us. He was in Little Rock, Arkansas last weekend. And our live traveling deer display has been seen by hundreds of thousands of people across the US, mostly the upper Midwest. And it's been enjoyed by everyone, but the state of Minnesota is currently putting in, or working on putting laws in place that would effectively demand that we not only kill all of our deer, but kill all of our tame show bucks as well. So these are some uh, pretty harsh laws the state of Minnesota is working on, the, the DNR supporting it, and uh, it's a bad deal. They wanna have us kill our tame bottle fed pets, offer us a buyout to have them all slaughtered. And uh, let's talk about those laws. We want people to get involved, call your state reps, and let's not put up with this foolish legislature. Nolan, do you like deer farming? I do. Do you like this buck in the trailer? I do a lot. Do you want to kill him? No, I do not. Hey everyone, I wanted to uh, talk to you real quick about CWD. I've had a few deer farmers call me from across the state all excited about potential new legislation. Over the years, I've watched misinformation being presented concerning CWD and deer farming. So today I want to give a little history lesson on what exactly is going on with some factual information. Back in the day, when I first started raising deer back in 1992, I went to a game warden friend of mine and I asked him, can I raise deer? He got me the paperwork through the Minnesota DNR. The DNR was orchestrating and promoting people raising white-tailed deer. I got my license, started raising deer. For about 10 years, the DNR managed the deer farm. They oversaw my deer farm. And in nine out of 10 years, I never had an inspection. But today I hear people saying, the Board of Animal Health, they're just not doing a good job with deer farms. Just simply not true. The Board of Animal Health is doing a fantastic job. They come out and inspect my farm. They're in touch with us. They're applying all the rules that have been drafted concerning deer farms. But the DNR, for nine out of 10 years, I would beg them, hey, come out, do an inspection. You're supposed to, required by state law. Never got an inspection. The last year before the Board of Animal Health took over, the DNR finally came out and did an inspection. They asked foolish questions like, how many deer do you have? Well, the rules were, I didn't have to have an inventory. I didn't have to have any tagged animals. I had two and a half miles of fence put up roughly and my animals were reproducing at will and I didn't know how many fawns were being born. So under the DNR's rules and guidelines, I was raising whitetails, they got me into it, I invested in an agricultural pursuit. I invested in it. And now I hear people saying the DNR would do a much better job. There is a bill being drafted that says that the DNR would now take over for the Board of Animal Health as if they would do a much better job. So we've got some knucklehead legislature that wants to say, let's put the DNR in charge of deer farms. Well, there's a few statutes to consider here, okay? Under Minnesota Administrative Rules 1721.0370, Subdivision 9, it says farmed cervidae are livestock. So, so they want to pass a law that says the DNR is now going to extend their authority to be in charge of livestock. If we go under Minnesota property tax rules, we look on their little pamphlet and guideline that they print up. On page 20, it says farm cervidae, farmed cervidae, white-tailed deer, is an agricultural production and an agricultural pursuit. So under our Minnesota tax rules, if you have 10 contiguous acres fenced in for livestock production, you get a different rate of property tax because you're agriculture. And cervidae is in fact, by their own tax code rules on page 20, an agricultural production and an ag agricultural pursuit. So we've got a person in Minnesota wants to draft a law, we'll look at it, that says, let's turn this over to the DNR. Ridiculous, foolishness. We've also got other bills being proposed that say, let's, we, need, we need more fencing. We need better fencing. Well, when I first started raising deer, who set the guidelines at eight feet? Back in 1992, oh, the Minnesota DNR did. They said, you can raise deer. They held out their hand. They said, pay us some money, 
and we'll, we'll let you raise whitetails. It'll be fun and fantastic. So I paid them money and I started raising whitetails. They said, put the fence at eight feet. Now we've got a, a, a bill being drafted. We're gonna look at it here that says, well, we need double fencing and it needs to be 10 feet high. The Minnesota Board of Animal Health's doing a bad job. The Minnesota Board of Animal Health is doing a fantastic job. They're in touch, they're doing their job. Well, who set the height at eight feet? It was the Minnesota DNR back in the day, and now they're pointing fingers saying the Board of Animal Health is doing a bad job. CWD, it's so scary, we gotta, we gotta protect our wild deer herd. If we look at what's going on, I'm gonna pull up a map here. We, we've been shooting deer with snipers and hunters in southeast Minnesota. We've been wiping them out. And we think if we spend lots of money, that we're gonna solve CWD. Let's look at a map of the US and see. So if we wipe all the deer out of Southwest, Southeast Minnesota, have we solved CWD? It's been around for 40 years. The Western states have had it forever. Deer farms are causing CWD, I hear that too. Deer farms don't cause CWD. They're the light bulb that goes off when it's in the area. The scientists don't even know how it starts, but it's been in the Western states forever. Their deer herds are flourishing. They have hunting. They tell the people out there in the western states, when you go hunting, if the animal looks sick, don't eat it. And when you cook it, cook it well. Wear gloves when you butcher it. Well, we want all these laws now passed about you can't bring a deer across a state line, pull out its brain stem. You can't. They want to shut down deer farming. They want to have a, a moratorium where there's no more deer farms allowed in the state of Minnesota. Like that's going to fix CWD. CWD was around long before deer farms ever started. If you consider the fact that CWD has been here since we first developed a test, it's gonna be around for a while. And our lawmakers wanna legislate things and spend money and spend money. I've heard arguments, we need to be aggressive. We're spending a lot of money fighting CWD. We never agreed with the way the state was spending money fighting CWD. We never agreed with it. It's ridiculous. Helicopters to track and collar and record the movement patterns of white-tailed ears, like this is the first time that's ever been done. It's been done in about 10 other states or more. All you gotta do is get on the phone, call another state and say, hey, have you done any research on how far will a white-tailed deer migrate? Um, several years ago, a study was done in North Dakota. Let's look at the map. Uh, a college girl wrote a paper and got permission to tag deer in North Dakota. She tagged deer, about 75 of them. I spoke to her in person. I spoke to the biologist for the state of North Dakota. Why would I get involved? Because a deer showed up near my house with a tag and it said North Dakota with a phone number on it. The girl tagged about 75 deer in North Dakota, live caught them, put a tag in their ear, turned them loose the very next morning on the same property. They didn't relocate these deer. And then they just recorded where were these deer harvested? People were encouraged when you shot a deer with a tag and a North Dakota number, call the state and let us know where it was harvested. I was told they had a buck go between two and 300 miles, that they've had does routinely go 60 miles. If I was told that a doe would just up and move and go 50, 60, 70 miles, I would have called you a liar. I would have said it's not possible. But a doe shows up near my house, people are filming it out their windows, out at their cabin. I go look at it, the pictures, I'm stumped and all of a sudden it gets hit by a car, I pull the tag off, I call over to North Dakota, yeah, it migrated. How many miles is it on the map? That's a long ways. A year ago, I shot a mule deer north west of Lancaster. Mule deer walking around the field in circles. This fall, just like a couple weeks ago, a month ago, there was a mule deer shot north of Thief River. Where did mule deer come from? Mule deer are crossing state lines at will. But our state thinks if we eradicate all the deer in an area, well, we'll, we'll solve, we'll do something that all the other states could not do. We're gonna protect our deer herd and we're gonna save our deer herd from CWD. The other states, they didn't do it right. We're gonna do it right. We're gonna spend lots of money, outlaw deer farming, take away landowner rights, and then we'll save our deer herd. But look, these deer are traveling long distances. Um, a few summers ago, antelope showed up west of Kennedy, Minnesota. Antelope. We don't have antelope in Minnesota. The DNR, do we have antelope? Is there a season on them? Where did they come from? They just decided to wander west of Kennedy, Minnesota. 
animals move. If you look at the map of CWD across the U.S., we're surrounded by it. No amount of money and no amount of legislation is going to solve the CWD problem. Genetically, it can be resisted, just like Scrappy in sheep. Scrappy came through, killed off large percentages of the sheep many, many years ago. The ones that lived had a genetic resistance. They reproduced more of their kind and genetic selection pretty much eliminated the disease scrappy. If we, wanted to, if we were serious about controlling CWD, if our legislators didn't want to come up with nonsensical laws, they could, could get serious. One thing they could do, why don't they consider an embargo on hay from the western states? I've gone under my doe pens and I've seen lactating mothers pick up a shed antler and chew on it. They'll pick up a bone that was buried under the ground for years and start chewing on it. They lack calcium and phosphorus and they'll start chewing on it when they're lactating. These western states, you can go out there and mow 500 acres of land, row, mow, bale up soil, bale up little bones and feathers and pieces of hide, put it all in a hay bale, put it on a semi, bring it back to Minnesota, feed it to your cows and spread it out in your pastures where your deer are also, chunks of dirt and debris. So hunters, don't you dare bring a carcass across the state line unless it's done completely right, but bring in as much hay as you want. And we want to shut down deer farms, but wild deer are moving even more. I think these laws are nonsensical. Let's look at the rules that are already in place concerning CWD. Minnesota rule 1721.0420, chronic wasting disease, CWD. It is filled with guidelines for the state to follow concerning CWD. So what do I do on my farm? I have sent in brain stems for 15 plus years. Every deer that dies or is harvested, we grab the brain stem. We have to, by law, comply and send in the brain stem. So we've got these two new, three new possible rules that they want to pass on the state. Oh, you need double fencing. It needs to be 10 feet high. I don't have CWD. The, the science is sound. We send in the brain stem and we get results back that say it's, it's, it's not positive. You don't have CWD. Been doing that for 15 years. So the science is good. I don't have CWD. I have a closed herd. Many herds are closed. We don't import new deer into our farms. We get new bloodlines through artificial insemination. So why in the world would we need double fencing to prevent nose to nose contact if we're doing all the testing on every animal on our farm, we're testing 100% of our deer, we're sending in all the brain stems, and now our state says, you need to spend another $75,000 and put up a double fence around your livestock because we don't want CWD contaminating the wild herd. Why are we sending in all the brain stems? We're complying. Look up these rules. If I have one test come back positive for CWD, the state is telling us now, we need rules so you can't bring deer in and out of the state. Deer farms need to be shut down. If I have one deer come up positive for CWD, I'm under quarantine. There will be no deer leaving my farm. Everything will be destroyed. The rules are in place. We already have all the laws in place to protect our herd in the state of Minnesota. The rules are fantastic. They're in place. If I get CWD and it shows up in one deer, I'm done. Everything I'm invested is done. That's a harsh reality, but I got into deer farming. It's a family farm. My kids enjoy it. So now they're saying, well, let's take the citizens tax money and let's offer a voluntary buyout. You can get out. First of all, we're going to shut off all your funding. You no more deer farms in Minnesota. So you have no future customers. You can't sell out a state. You have to double fence. We're going to hit you really hard. So you got to spend a lot of money. So we're really going to handicap your business so you can't make a penny. And then we're going to do a voluntary buyout. And if you want to sell all your deer, well, you could not sell. If you want to shoot all your deer, we'll pay you money with taxpayers' money. Wait a minute. This is America. I make money on an agricultural pursuit on my farm. I pay taxes. When I pay taxes, we hire school teachers. We put snow plows to work and the world goes round. Tax money is at work. But they want to limit the tax revenue in Minnesota, outlaw deer farming, and, and they don't appreciate the tax revenues that's being made. On what, 400 farms in Minnesota? Is that the number? 
They want to run us all out of business. It's, it's just insanity. The rules are in place. They're good rules. The Board of Animal Health is doing a fantastic job. States that don't have deer farming, like Arkansas, guess what? They got CWD. It exists. There's nothing they can do about it. If you care about land, if you're a rancher, if you're tied to farming, and you think this is ridiculous legislation that could be coming down imposing fellow farmers engaged in agricultural pursuit, doing stuff on their land where they pay taxes, me, other deer farmers in the state, we pay taxes on our land, we generate income, we pay taxes, landowner rights. This is an overreach by our legislators to outlaw deer farming. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you care about landowners, you care about farming, you care about ranching, share this video and be vocal. Our state is thinking of some ridiculous rules to pass on to make it really hard on us. One more thing to add. The deer farm industry has been under attack for the last many years. Every legislative session, some knucklehead comes up with a new bill and he doesn't even know the laws that are already in place. And he drafts a bill and tries to get it implemented to shut down deer farming. Who is he getting pressure from? We put up with it every year. If you want to pass some new laws, I got an idea. I got two that would be fantastic for Minnesota, okay? How about if you draft a new law and you think you want to take a shot at an industry like deer farming, you get one bite at the apple. You can't come back every legislative session and try it again. You want to attack deer farming and go for double fencing? Okay, try it. You were defeated. You can't come back to that topic for 10 more years. Let's pass that law. You get one bite at the apple, you failed. Take your best shot, you failed. You can't come back to it for 10 more years. I'd like that law. Another law that would be fantastic, I appreciate our legislators, but they got hired to pass laws. So they feel like, well, we're getting paid, we might as well pass laws. Let's do this. If you're gonna pass a new law, you have to abolish an old one. Let's pass that law. Every time you pass a new law, get rid of an old one. Man, I can go on a, on a rant now. Minnesota wants to protect its deer herd. What are we doing about the wolves? Where are we at there? Wolves have killed more deer in northwest Minnesota. I'm fed up with it. Hunters are fed up with it. Landowners are fed up. Well, it's the federal government. The federal government? Can we, can we sue the federal government? Where's, where's our Minnesota rights to control our own wolf population? Our state's silent. They're not doing anything. Wolves are wiping out our northern deer herds. But CWD just gets killed 10 deer in the state, 20, whatever the number is. We got to do something about CWD. This is ridiculous, people. Please share the video.